welcome back. If you have been following this series, then you should have a timescale DB instance somewhere in the ether that you know how to connect to. And right now we can actually get to the fun stuff. In this video, we are going to be looking at uh, hyper tables and chunks, really the bread and butter of timescale DB. And then we'll actually go through creating a hyper table and a regular table, fun bonus. So first off, we really wanna go through a quick overview of hyper tables and chunks because many of you may not be super familiar with those concepts. Um, however, if you wanna skip that and just jump to creating your first hyper table and your first regular table in your timescale DB database, um, then you can go ahead, we bookmarked everything. So let's go right in. Essentially, a hyper table is like a normal Postgres table, but with automatic time and sometimes space partitioning, plus some extra functionality, and Timescale DB manages all of it for you, which is really convenient. So hyper tables are really the basis for why Timescale DB is able to be so efficient when working with time series data. So each hyper table is made up of what we call chunks and chunks are an important concept to get comfortable with because so many of our functions and policies really work on chunk, a chunk by chunk basis. So important concept, definitely you want to dig in <laughs> to understanding chunks. <laughs> so these chunks are essentially child tables inside of the larger hyper table. And how we actually break up your data into these chunks is based on time and specifically the time column in your data. So since I always learn best from examples, let's consider this example. So let's say that you have data collected over three days. So this is what the normal Postgres table might look like. <clears throat> so if you were, if you wanted to take this table and instead kind of create a hyper table so you could optimize on that time series efficiency. Um, let's say that your, ta your hyper table had a chunk time interval of one day. So that chunk time interval essentially uh, specifies how time scales B is creating those chunks for your hyper table. So with a chunk time interval of one day, that would mean that each chunk within our hyper table will only contain data that occurs over a one day period. So each chunk has only a one day interval for it. So that's because our chunk time interval is one day. Makes sense, right? So then this image is really what that is showing. So right on the left, we have our normal table, like we saw, <laughs> and it has all of our data kind of together in one big lump while a hyper table, which is on the right, partitions each value into specific chunks. And in this day, in this case, having each day's data in separate chunks. So we see right January 2nd, all of the readings from January 2nd are being mapped or they would be kind of in a chunk of its own. So that's the chunk ID of one. So that chunk ID one is for all January 2nd readings. That chunk ID two is for all the January 3rd readings and so on and so forth. So that's kind of how the chunks work within hyper tables. And by separating out the data in this way or partitioning by time, the system is able to do a lot less work when you query, insert, delete, or update data by time. Say you want to query data from a single day rather than the system having to scan an entire table to find those specific values. With hyper tables, the system knows exactly which chunk to go to, to grab and either look for or grab that information. So it's a lot faster. It kind of gives it a blueprint of where your data is based on time, which makes your system more efficient. Now, this was a very brief explanation. So if you are interested in learning more and wanna get more comfortable with hyper tables and chunks, definitely check out the links that we provided below because um, they can be really helpful in just getting more comfortable with all that. So let's actually create some hyper tables. 
While the concepts behind hybrid tables can be a little daunting, creating them is actually really easy, which is awesome. So the data set that we're going to be using for this getting started series is stock data and it consists of two tables. So the first table is second by second stock trading data for the top 100 most traded symbols. And then the other is uh, company information that maps those 100 most traded symbols to their actual company names. So those are the two tables. Um, the stock trade table, we are going to transform into a hyper table because right, it's second by second stock trading data. That's gonna be a ton of time series data that we want to you know, make as efficient as possible when we query from it. So we're gonna make that into a hyper table. And then the company table, we're actually just gonna leave as a regular Postgres table. So let's go ahead and set these tables up. Um, we're gonna start off with the hyper table because I know that that's really what you're all here for. <laughs> so to do that, um, we first just create a regular Postgres table. So we're gonna go ahead and use this command. So create table, um, we name our table stocks real time. Okay, and then we have four columns that we're going to specify for this table. The first one is time, which is a timestamp time zone column. And we do specify not null. Um, so with hyper tables, it is a requirement that the time partitioning column is not null. Um, if you don't specify it here, timescale DB will put that constraint on when you kind of transform it into a hyper table. Um, but it's easiest to just throw it in now, you know, I figure. So <laughs> next we have symbol, um, and that's going to be a text column. Then we have price, which is a double precision, and day volume, which is going to be an integer and you know specified not null or null for whichever one. So once we run that, we have a lovely normal Postgres table. And you might be wondering, well, then how do we create a hyper table? Well, it is super simple. All we need to do is just run this next command. It is truly just a select statement, <laughs> which is great. It's super awesome. Um, so this create hyper table function is a special time scale DB function, which transforms your normal tables into a hyper table. And there are additional arguments that you can put into here um, when you create your hyper table, like chunk time interval, which is you know what we mentioned before briefly. I'm just gonna use all the defaults, but definitely check it out if you want um, to maybe specify some of the parameters around your hyper table more specifically. So cool beans. And in addition, since I likely am going to be querying a lot um, by the company symbol, I'm also going to add an index on the company symbol as well. So I'm going to go ahead and run this command to create the index on the symbol column as well and boom once we run that we have a hyper table and additional indexing which is awesome so then next all we need to do is just create the second table for our company information and to do this we just run the following command so we have create table company is the name of the table with two columns we have symbol and that's going to be text Right, it should mirror exactly the symbol column of the stocks real time table. And then the second column is going to be the name um, and that will also be text and that's just the name of the company. And there you have it. So we have our tables. Well, what's next? We insert data into our tables. And that's exactly what we're going to be covering in the next video in this series. If you wanna make sure not to miss that video or any of the awesome content coming from TimeScaleDB, you'll want to smash that subscribe button. Um, and if this video is helpful or useful, or if you enjoyed it, whatever, we always appreciate any likes and comments below as well. Um, thank you so much for spending your time watching this video today. I hope that it was helpful in some way. Um, and as always, friends, Happy coding and see you next time.